everyone, it's Sky here, and today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to do this type of background. Now, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing this right, but I could be pronouncing it wrong. This is inspired from a bokeh background. Uh, it's B-O-K-E-H. You'll see it in the description. So it's kind of a mix between that and kind of like a galaxy. So, um... I actually was trying to do a bokeh background for this, but um, I didn't really like it, so I kind of just ended up mixing in a whole bunch of different colors and getting rid of like the circle aspects of it. Um, it still kind of looks blurry, but it looks a little bit more like a galaxy to me, so it's kind of like a mix between the two. Um, I'm not really sure what you would call it. Right now, I'm not in love with it, but I'm hoping that once I put in some stars and stuff, that it will appeal to me a little bit more. Um, I'm going to say if you're trying anything new, maybe try it on a spare piece of paper or a picture that, you know, you're not really fond of. That way, if it turns out to be a disaster, um, you're not going to be too upset about it. Um, this is my first page in Ivy and the Inky Butterfly. I've been wanting to color in this since I got it, and I haven't been able to until now. And I absolutely loved how it was going, and then I started in with the background, and I'm kind of regretting it. I probably should have just let it, but hope left it, sorry. Hopefully I can save it, and if not, hopefully it will be a tutorial that some of you might be interested in. So all I'm using for this is some pencils, and um, my white pencil and my blender pencil to blend. So um, you can use any pencils that you'd like. I kind of stuck to colors that I've been using throughout my image so far, and um, let's see, I've got four pencils plus my black that I'm just kind of doing a border with because I'm going to be painting on the inside of this black. But um, if you're curious, the pencils that I'm using are Inden Throne Blue, which is PC208. I'm also using Non Photo Blue, which is PC, I think this is 9... One nine. I'm also using Parma Violet, which is PC1008, as well as just a little bit of cream, which is PC914. Black, which is PC935. And then I'm also using White, which is PC938. And then the blender pencil, which is super tiny, so I can't tell you what that one is. It's not that it really matters, but it is PC 1077. So basically all that I'm doing is I am taking random pencils and I'm just lightly layering them down in different places. Now this isn't going to be an exact tutorial as you can probably already tell because I've gotten over half of this done already. So I will be speeding up through a lot of this. But um, for the most part you're just going to randomly just put these colors in and kind of hope for the best I guess. What I've been doing is I've just kind of been randomly picking up colors and then layering them over each other, which will also give you different colors. Um, I've just been trying to make sure that there's not too much of one color and I've been trying to layer them over each other as often as I can just to kind of keep the background looking a little interesting. Now. I suppose if you've clicked on this video that you're probably interested in this background. As I said, I'm not too happy with it as of now. Um, or maybe just not too happy with it on this image. But I'm hoping that once I add the stars and stuff and then finish it up that hopefully it will look good. And, you know, I hate when people do tutorials and then they don't show their finished piece. So after showing this background, I'll probably still do a speed color of doing the rest of this and all the little details and stuff. That way you guys can see how I finish it and how it turns out. 
and hopefully that will also give me a little bit more initiative to finish because right now I feel like just scrapping it, which I never do. I always finish my pieces even if I don't like them. I think, anyways, I can't think of any time where I've scrapped a piece. So just kind of adding random colors everywhere. I'm starting off really light and then when I get it to where I don't mind it, um, then I kind of go back in and darken up the colors. For me, this type of background is really difficult because I'm a perfectionist, so I don't feel like I'd ever really be completely happy with it until it's like totally done. I just feel like the need to just constantly keep going over and over and over until it's just a big mess. But for this kind of background you can't really do that. And um, I'm taking a little bit of comfort in knowing that anytime you do a galaxy and stuff, which I do a lot of galaxy paintings so I know this firsthand, the more wonky it looks the better it actually ends up looking in the end. So I'm just kind of focusing on that to help me get it finished. So one thing, whatever pencils you choose, I would kind of mix them all together on a page just to see what kind of colors they create to make sure that you actually like the colors that you're going to get. Because like I said, you can make a bunch of different colors. I can mix this uh, purple with the darker blue and kind of make a darkish purple color. And then um, another one that I really like to do is I like to take this purple and mix it with the lighter blue which kind of gives it like this soft purple which I actually really like. I've been doing that a lot throughout this piece. And then I've also just been using my cream to kind of fill in some lighter areas just so it's not completely dark and I'm actually not 100% sure if I like that or not but I'm just kind of going with it. And I've done it this far so now I kind of have to stick with it which is kind of like another reason why you should always practice on a separate piece of paper before committing something to an image that you like. But, you know, I always, I always tell my friends when they ask me for advice, I tell them to just always go with their gut and like wing it. The worst that happens is you don't like it and you learn. But uh, I decided to take my own advice and I don't know if it was actually a good idea. I'm hoping that I'm just overthinking it, but we'll see. So in this area here, I'm kind of starting to like it, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep adding some more color. I'm going to use a little bit of a firmer pressure just to kind of really blend those colors together. They don't have to be perfect because we're going to be using a white pencil and a blending pencil to finish blending them, but the more color we get down on the page, um, the more vibrant the colors will be. Um, in some areas I'm leaving the colors a little bit less dense and in others I'm making them super vibrant which will also help kind of make it look like there's even more colors in this than just the four pencils that I'm using. And then also in some areas I've been using the blender pencil and in others I've been using the white and the white softens the colors. So for example in here you can kind of see that it's a little bit faded so it kind of looks like pastel but then you get into here where it's like really vibrant. Here I use the white and here I use the blender pencil, so that kind of also helps give you some variation and I feel like the more variation you get, the more um, interesting the piece looks. I think I'm going to speed this up and finish the rest of this and then I will come back in when we um, blend everything together.
Okay, so now that I've got my base down, I went over some areas to give it a little bit of extra color. I'm going to go in with my black, and this is totally optional. The only reason that I'm doing this is for my kind of border on the outline, because I'm kind of going to do a vignette border, <laughs> vignette border leading into um, my galaxy here. So basically what I'm going to do, sorry, I'm going to flip this upside down just because of the angle that I'm at. I'm basically just going to create a harsh line on the outside here, and then I'm just going to fade it inwards. Once I'm done that, I'm going to take my blending pencil and I'm just going to blend the black in towards the rest of the galaxy. I'm going to speed this up and I'll meet you back when that part's done. So now that I've got my border done, I'm sure a lot of you probably wouldn't have done that part anyways, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue on with my blending pencil and I'm just going to bring the color up from the border a little bit. Now I can tell exactly where I've stopped, I've got pretty much like a line right here, but for the most part I can tell where I've already done and where I haven't just based on the amount of white that's left in the image. So I'm just going to bring up some of the color from the gray with the blending pencil here. And for the most part, I'm using small circular motions and I'm using a fairly firm pressure. Next, I'm going to switch to my white pencil, which I'm going to sharpen a little bit so it's a little dull. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a medium pressure, medium to firm, I suppose, and again, I'm just going to use those light circles to kind of blend the color into, oh, into other areas. Now I'm only going to do this for some areas because I want some areas to look lighter than others and then for areas that I want to keep a little bit darker I'm going to go in with my blending pencil and I'm going to blend that way. Another thing, since you're not going to be pushing as hard with the white pencil you can go back over some areas that you've blended with the white pencil. Um, with your blending pencil to just get rid of some of the excess white spots. So for example here I've got a couple white spots that I want to try and get rid of a little bit more. So you can just lightly go back in with your blending pencil over areas that you've done with the white. I'm 
gonna switch back and forth between these pencils and then just finish this off. And I will meet you back when I'm done. So here is this part of my background done. Um, so next I would want to add stars and stuff to this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a spare sheet of paper and I'm going to try to outline this shape here if I can see it. It could be a little tricky. Let's see if I can pull my light closer and maybe see it. Hmm. Well, it doesn't need to be perfect, so Try and get the majority of the shape outlined. Yeah. We'll go with that. So now I'm just going to cut this out. Now, if you're doing this on a really intricate piece, so say, um, say one of Hannah Lynn's girls and there's like a bunch of different objects kind of around where your sky is, what you can do is just use smaller scraps of paper to try and cover as much of the image up as you can. That's actually pretty close. And um, then just if you get paint somewhere where you don't want it to be, you just quickly wipe off the paint. So I'm going to find something heavy that can get paint on it, just to kind of place right here. Paintbrush might work. Okay. And then I'll just put some other random objects around here that I don't mind if they get paint splattered on them. So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a palette or um, if you have like a yogurt lid or that or just a paper plate, that would work fine too. I'm going to take some white paint, it doesn't really matter what kind, although I would try to go for something a little bit more, actually I guess it wouldn't really matter, you go for something really cheap like Apple Barrel, I have this Dale Rowney acrylic white paint, and I'm just going to put a little bit on here. So you can see there's not really much there. Next I'm going to take a spray bottle and I'm just going to spray the paint to dilute it. And um, I would recommend doing this off your paper or being really careful if you do it on your paper. So uh, if you don't have a spray bottle you could just put a little bit of water in there and mix it up. Um, I just find a spray bottle is a little bit easier to control and not get too much. So once you've done that, you want to mix up your paint with your water. And 
now for this next part you could use an old toothbrush um, or anything with bristles. I'm going to use a fan brush. I'm going to get it a little bit damp first. So you never want to use a dry brush. And then all I'm going to do is dip into the paint and then I'm just going to tap with the brush. Now this is a messy process so if you have anything on your desk that you don't want to get any white on I suggest you cover it up or work in an area where um, it doesn't matter if you're a little bit messy. And I'm just going to keep going until I'm happy with it. And I think that's good enough for me. As you can see, you do kind of get paint everywhere, so like I said, you kind of got to be careful about that. So you can wait for that to dry, or you can go in with the next step. I'm just going to go in with a gel pen and I'm just going to put in some bigger stars if my gel pen wants to work. You can also do this with acrylic paint. I just want to add in a few. I don't want to put in too many. Maybe one more up here. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I did get paint on a few areas that I didn't really want it, so I'm just going to take a Q-tip and I'm just going to kind of rub the paint off in those areas. If some of your paint drops are already dried and they won't rub off, for the most part you can scratch them off. Or at least make it look like they're barely there. So that is pretty much how you achieve this background. Um, this is super messy and really mottled, which is why I'm kind of calling it an in-between bouquet and um, galaxy background. I really hope I'm saying that right, but I'm not sure. Um, I am going to finish speed coloring the rest of this. I'm basically just going to paint in the rest of the background and then do all my little white details and stuff until this is done. Um, if you guys want to watch that, just keep watching, and if you were just here for the background, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, if you do use this technique, I would love to see it, so go ahead and tag me in it um, on Facebook or my Instagram or in whatever groups that I'm in, and 
If you're signing off now, I hope you have a wonderful day. And if you're continuing to watch, I hope you enjoy the rest of this. Saying, ooh, you've got one life.
Uh, if you guys have watched up till here, I hope you enjoyed the process of this. Um, I definitely like it a little bit more. I still wish that I would have left the background white though. I just feel like these colors don't really go as well as I thought they would with the colors that I already have, which is crazy because they're pretty much the exact same colors. Um, anyways, that's it for finished and I hope this inspires you guys to persevere even if you don't like um, how your image is turning out. Um, it's always a learning experience. I will definitely remember to test out my colors and effect next time before applying it to the page. Um, I did actually think about blacking this whole area and then putting in my own writing but I didn't really want to do that. I might still do something else with this. For now, I'm going to leave it like this, but um, I probably will just, I think I'm going to black out this whole image, aside from just the little bits. I'll leave like little bits of white, maybe just outline the lettering in white, maybe do it that way. I'm not 100% sure. Anyways, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed, and um, if you like my videos, stay tuned for more. I have a lot of stuff planned. And that's it. Hope you guys have a great day. Bye.